All right. Hello and welcome. Thanks for coming out. Today, we are going to try messing with some Rika. I haven't messed with these cards at all. This is my first time genuinely reading them. <clears throat> but we're naming them a go. I've been making fun of these for a while. So let's see if they're actually good for snakes. I'm just getting acquainted with the monsters. So I'm on the last one. We'll probably read this together and then do some crafting. I'm going to be a little out of my element because I am used to playing reptiles. I'm not used to playing insect plant. Although, as Codename put it, I am going to be using RIP as the abbreviation for these three monster types. I think RIP is such an awesome, funny way of doing that. So that'll be what we do carrying on. So this is the one that I think is decent, though I don't love Raika no Kusarigama. Okay, now let's read. So basically, they are just really good at hitting the field. They're kind of a swarm deck. So let's try one Serpentine Princess. I'm going off a list that was put in the Discord a while ago. I'm not 100% whose it is. I can try and find out later. But it looks pretty standard, honestly. There's a lot going on here that I would expect. And then there are a few things that I wouldn't. And I think those kind of stem from a lack of experience with the archetype. Not a good or bad thing, just saying. They seem not 100% ideal is all. So, we'll start with this. This is a reptile suite I really like. We can put in some good cards. We're going to need these. We're going to need the planet pollutant. Interestingly, that's actually not a card in the list I'm copying. I'm not really copying it. I guess I'm changing this much. I did take their ratios for Rika monsters, though. I'm also a little sad with the levels of these guys. They're kind of weird levels. I wish they were fours because then rank fours would just be much more accessible, but that's OK. Let's put in three of the best card in the game. Three of the second best card in the game. That's it. I'm kidding, but I still I really like these cards. These are my favorite hand traps. Three of the third best card. And a bit of that. Okay. So we've got our non-engine picked out. I'm not sure what this trap card that the list I'm looking at is playing is, unfortunately. I also don't really like this trap card. Target cards are component. Well, actually, no, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's kind of cool. Let's see what insect links there are. Is there anything worth playing? I'm just trying to figure out what some of the cards I'm even looking at are. Crawlers or insects, apparently. I don't know what else I thought they'd be. They're like machines, all right? Give me a break. Two plus insect plants and our reptile monsters. So what's cool is that Daybreak does access the Rika monsters pretty easily. Also, these lads, they have some arts on them. I genuinely don't know what to play in the extra deck for this. I have no idea. Uh... <laughs> Help. Chat. <laughs> uh, let's do this in the meantime. The side deck doesn't really matter, but it's nice to have it ready. Help me out. Help me out. Build my deck for me. What am I supposed to do? Read these things? I did read them. I, I'm mostly kidding, but uh, I do not know what the extra deck should look like. Are we just trying to make Rika boards, or are we trying to play some other stuff? I guess we can 
go for the teardrop line. I really like that, actually. Serena, she is a plant. It's all coming together. <clears throat> we have a few more slots. Let's just look up a Rika deck list and see what we come up with. Rika Octo deck. Does anybody build this? Oh, it's a Sun Avalon monster in that extra. Yeah, it's this thing. Two plus Link Monsters. This card is Link Summoned. You can add one Sun Avalon Spell Trap. And that must be a Bloom. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. Sorry we're after a little bit of a slow start. I'm just getting to bear with what this deck is. So what this card says, it's a Link 4 plant. Two plus Links. If this card is Link Summoned, you can add one Sun Avalon Spell Trap from your deck to your hand. This card cannot be destroyed by a opponent's card effects and cannot be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent from attacking directly. Once per turn, tribute one Link Monster this card points to. Destroy any number of cards your opponent controls up to that monster's Link rating. So this is removal for Links, which is pretty good as we're able to revive our Links by putting Rip Monsters on the bottom of the deck. So that sounds pretty fun, actually. This is such an anime art. Okay. That looks pretty cool. This is based on Lithium 2300's list. I like to shout out smaller creators once in a while. You know how it is. I like to give a hand to the little guy. Hyperion. I honestly don't know what else to put in the extra. Abyss Dweller? I don't know. Baguska? Sure. There aren't that many rip types that I know of. So... I don't know, man. Is Mascarena still worth playing in this deck? I feel like it is. Goddess, sure. Let's go with this for now. This can be our Rikog Dodic deck. Let me get a deck list. And then we can stumble through some duels, you and I. Put up our deck list. How's everybody doing? You having a nice day? I went to locals and I went two and one at locals. That was really fun. We played the deck profile list we did with the five Kestra monsters, the punk and the Ogdotic slicer line. Round one, we went against voiceless voice and we lost one to two. So we took a game. Round one, he went first. He set up. I wasn't able to play through it. Round two, I was able to establish the slicer lock and he just couldn't play into it. And then round three, I was able to make the slicer lock and then I didn't have any follow up. And so he just put big dudes on the board until he could imperm the cosmic slicer and take back the game state. So we lost that one. Next up was snake eye, pure snake eye, which we are kitted to beat. My deck specifically is made for that. It did well against it at the regional, and it did well against it here at locals. Game one, he bricks really bad. Straight passes. This is going to be a nice troll. Unless they're on cash. But I assume this is just a splash. And so we're able to set up a board, and he just calls game. Next, he goes first. He sets up an Apo, which was pretty strong because I had Nib in hand and I was holding it because most people don't make the Apolosa, but he had the read. He ended on a pretty strong Snake Eye board. I revealed the Nib just to take a charge off Apo. Ooh, a turn ending droll here, I think. A turn ending droll feels so good. We revealed the Nib just to drain the Apo. It comes into our turn. We try to play, but he's just got too many interrupts. And ultimately, we pass to him and he just kills us with the field spell up. He's got like 3,000 damage just from the buff on the field spell. We just died to beat down. Game three, I go first. We're going to pause the story because I need to actually think a little bit hard. I, I mean, a little bit. I mean, a lot. We're going to start. Hmm. The Fenrir is a problem. I think we start with the Rika no Marekobe. 
I don't know how to say this card name, but it looks really cool. We're gonna send. We're gonna. Is it send? That's just a summon. We're gonna use its ability. He's thinking with a response here. They might have Imperm set here. They might have Ash. Yep. Ash is okay. This card doesn't do anything now that it's just on the field. So the new plan is to start linking up. I think the first link you make is... Link 2 over here. I think you make Musha Dokudo first because he reses another guy. And then you link climb up from there. So let's go for Nunu. Use its effect. Dump a dark reptile. From your hand. I think we'll just go for Zoha. Because at least Zoha sets up. That's interesting. Okay. Clearing the Mare Kobe. That seems really weak. IMO, but whatevs. We're going to go Zoha. We're going to drop the trap card, the Sun Avalon trap. We're going to activate our Nunu. Now, a worry I have is it looks like we play into Nib with this deck, which is not my favorite thing. Going to level with you. I want to get this Nunu banished so that I can special summon the Raika no Yahazu Kamikiri. I like these names a lot. I love Japanese flavored archetypes. I mean, who doesn't though? They're just really fun to look at. We're going to go for the slicer line because if they interrupt it, we can kind of still play. It depends. The link two we want to go into is two monsters, including an, a rip monster. So if we got nibbed on the slicer line, we're able to use the nib token and still go up into our Rika plays, which I think is pretty cool. Summon out the curse. Would you like a free monster? Effects negated from your graveyard. You get you get so used to explaining your cards when you play Ogdotic because just nobody knows what they do. Okay, they opt not to. They should, but they probably just don't understand what the prompt is. We're gonna use this. We're gonna search out a daybreak. I don't know what my opponent's on. They're just on staples right now. We're going to tribute this off. We're going to summon out not three, four tokens. Here we could start linking into Rika stuff, but I think I would rather start the slicer play. Hmm. This is actually kind of a weird spot. I think they're thinking about nibbing us or something. I guess they could be thinking about their imperm here as well on the summon. They're going to read this and try to decipher if it does anything. It doesn't. If they nib here, we just go Rika. If we do that, we make this guy and then... He searches a Rika back row, and the spell lets you grab another Rika from Grave, I'm pretty sure. Which would link up into the four if you wanted. So we could make the Kusarigama. Who's really cool. I like her a lot. I just like seeing more reptile boss monsters. I wish we had a few more options. Slice is really cool and really good, but it feels bad to be limited the way we are. What we could do here is we could actually use two tokens, link into Musha, and then use Musha and revive a Rika monster. Hmm. Actually, Yahazu, if it's sent as a link material, revives a Rip monster, which is really solid, which actually triggers Zoha's grave effect, funny enough. So if we go Yohazu next, actually, we could go into Musha and then Yohazu. Okay, they pass priority back. 
Let's do this, actually. This plays a little worse into Nib, I think, but we're going to summon this out. And we're going to go for... Hmm. We're going to go for Musha. We're going to use these two as materials. The effect of Kamikiri is going to trigger, letting us summon a Rip Monster from Graveyard. Except itself, right. We'll summon Zoha. Zoha, we're not going to use the effect. We're going to use this effect to resurrect a Raika monster. And now we cannot, the whole turn we use this guy, you can't spec non-rip monsters. So that's a pretty big deal. We have three materials for the slicer. So I think what we do here is we go one, two, three, into Uga Minishu. <laughs> okay, I have to read that a few more times before I actually understand what it says. We're gonna banish a few things here. We'll banish this. And we don't want to banish our Link, because I can actually jump back out from the grave. We'll banish the King of the Feral Imps. Search out our Rika trap card. Hmm, so what this guy does is he can actually jump back out. So if we do that, we go. Let's go for our Slicer, I suppose. Bam, bam, bam. Summon our Cosmic Slicer. Slicer on summon. Will it... Oh, they have Solemn. Right? That's gotta be it. They have to have a... Because they had a priority window before... Our effect could trigger. And the only thing that would do that is a card that responds to the summon. Okay. Now, if we use this, we can also still access a Knight Sword. But if we use this, special summon this card, it doesn't banish itself either. We can link up. We can actually go two plus rip monsters. Hmm. Target one, place on the bottom if you spec this card. Hmm. Do we go into the link five? We could. I think we'll summon... Wait, what's happening? Oh, reading. <laughs> reading. Reading OP. All right, uh, obviously that's a misplay. My V team, sorry. We could link back up into it, but there doesn't seem to be a huge point to doing that. Let's just go for our battle phase. Okay, reading. So, you can target one insect plant reptile you control placed on the bottom of the deck. I missed that part. I'm, I'm waiting for the Rika support. How strong do you think it will be? Enough to play Ogdozen. What is Hotu? Sorry, is that the next set? Also, thanks for coming out, Julia. Julio. Sorry, pronunciation is hard. Is this an evenly we're seeing? Mmm. Evenly's bad. Evenly's bad. We can... Heart of the Underdog. Oh, Heart of the Underdog. I mean, yeah, I think, I think it's certainly strong enough for that, but I would like to see it see competitive play in advance as well. I would like decks to be good enough to be played kind of everywhere, you know? Let's use this. Let's put back our King of the Fair Limbs. I think Rika seems pretty weak, to be honest. Their boss monsters kind of don't do anything, and I'm not a big fan of decks like that. We can use the Planet Pollutant, we're not going to. Is it one or two? Is it Julio or Julio? Help me out, one or two. It's not, I don't know. It's tough because I really like, well. I mean, we just can't. I say, wow, we know that was there though. Mm, actually, I should have used. I can't even say this. Kubi Kadimai. Who, Julio. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Yeah, we should have used this trap first. We could have destroyed that card. 
The secondary effect seems so bad, though. The... If a rip monster is destroyed by battle or card effect while this is in your grave, except the turn it was sent there, banish this card, then target one monster, Pokemon just destroy it. That seems so weak and terrible. I wish that were not terrible. Are you an Ogdotic player, Julio? Is that a deck you enjoy? I think my biggest disappointment with, with Rika is it doesn't feel like it it pushes Ogdotic any further. It's a new reptile archetype. And that's that's depressing because the way they design things is usually to be holistic. So we're in Year of the Fire right now. That means the fire decks all sort of synergize. The Snake Eye stuff tutors out level ones. What are level ones? Stuff like Ponix, you know? They made those clearly with the intent of them working together, and it feels bad that they didn't give that same love to Rika and Ogdotic. Yeah, Ogdotic are reptiles, and they make bodies, and they appreciate having more bodies, but the rock to the lock into rip monsters is really brutal. It's really tough because they just don't give us monsters that are are worth locking in for, I feel. We're also in a pretty bad spot here. I did misplay, admittedly. I sh I put back a link three for a link two. That was dumb. I really like the Sun Avalon Bloom tech. When it, this effect is activated, if you control link four or higher, negate the effects of all face up monsters your opponent currently controls during damage click. If your plant link battles, it gains attack equal to the combined of attack of monsters it's currently pointing to until the end of this turn. This seems like a really cool card to search. Yeah, I also play Ogdotic. As you say, most people surprise themselves reading our effects. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy how bad some of these cards are. Whenever I try to explain Curse for the first time, people are really suspicious. They think that if they don't take the free monster, you don't get to revive a thing. But no, it's part of the summon, the monster to their field. I, I don't know why they did that to Curse. I have, I've made my peace with it. I'm used to it, but it's really... We need more reptile boss monsters, for sure. Or boss monsters that are just good for reptiles. They don't even have to be reptiles themselves. Just things that synergize with the archetype would be so nice. So needed. Because as it is, we're kind of left using the spam potential of Ogdotic to make generic bosses, which I don't mind. I actually like generic boss monsters, but I know a lot of people don't like that sort of thing. This was a misplay, though. We should have cleared one more thing on their board than we have. Elsa? Oh, we do have Earth Monsters in our grave. Do we? Wait, no, we don't. What are you doing? Did you... Did you think this was Earth? What's happening? Battle phase. You're just going for more damage? Is that what this was? Or was this a play around evenly? I'm kind of confused. I don't know what that was. I don't know why they got rid of a Reflegia and a Sarah. Maybe they thought they could summon from own grave. That is a good draw. We have our Nunu and our Zoha as well. We also shuffled back our King of the Feral Imps. So we could try for a different line but i think normal summoning this is still just solid honestly mm, actually imperm's pretty bad here honestly imperm's pretty nasty what i should have done was summon out nunu first because now we have to go battle phase if we want to clear our field and crash this guy but even if we did that there's not a huge point Honestly. I suppose we could Nunu, tribute Nunu for curse, curse revive Zoha, Zoha, add and discard, triggering the effect of Nephilibus to summon from grave, and then we'd have one, two, three bodies, four using Nephilibus. I also use generic boss monsters like Dragoobion, but having a boss for the deck would have its own. Oh yeah, I that's the problem with people complaining about generic boss monsters. Those monsters aren't the problem. It's that they keep giving dog water boss monsters to decks. Like, give decks good boss monsters and they'll play those boss monsters. Draglubion's sick. I've moved away from the rank eights in my builds after cutting the Royals and Alert, but I Draglubion's just such a sick card. Accessing Hope Harbinger for free is so nice.
Hmm. Elsa has kind of a troublesome effect here, honestly. I'd rather not proc it. I think we might actually have to do the battle phase play, which feels so scrubby, but I think this is what we just have to do because I didn't play very well. Thanks to the evenly, we don't have a lot going on in our graveyard. So we'll go for the Nunu, summon it. We'll go for the Curse, tributing the Nunu. I don't know. I'm not super impressed yet. I'll say that much. They get a free monster here. Free Fenrir makes the most sense to me. Although, I guess a Trap Tricks in... Yeah. I mean, that's probably the weirdest one, right? Target Zoha. Summon Zoha. Use his effect. Here we can search out... Oh. The only card we got left. Oh, it's an Ogdo. That's why. It's gotta be... I always think Zoha searches Reptile. I don't do that. Don't worry. But I always... In my head, that's what it does. They have to discard here. We are going to use... Nephilibus. We'll spec it. Go like this. And we'll use Nephilibus to revive a reptile. Pretty nice here that we're able to actually revive the Naya and get the back research. We're able to go for that water lily. Now, we still have. Hmm. I think we do this. I think we go. King of the Feral Imps. We want to keep this Naya from getting banished. We want to keep it in rotation in our graveyard. We're going to use that effect. Sending this. We could even use the Zoha to pick it back up. Now we're going to add a card from deck to hand. We'll go for the Tokage. Water Lily. It's another card that people get suspicious with. Yeah, Water Lily is great. But it's not a 3 of because... Even though it looks like it should be, it can't do a whole lot. Oh my god, are we... Oh no, we can't use the effect because it's a discard for some reason. Okay, we've got one, two reptiles in grave. We're going to be going for the Kusari Gama, which is pretty cool. Opening two sucks. I agree. That's why you only play one. <laughs> We have the Zoha activation. I think we probably hold this Water Lily. I don't see a huge point in activating it, so let's pass. Neither play active monster effects in the hand. Yeah, this Kusari Gama is not doing anything. This would much better be a second slicer. So I think second slicer is a thing I should start running, honestly. It's just hard. The extra space feels so tight. But once the slicer gets cleared, if you're able to make another, you're still able to make use of those A counters that the pollutant is spreading. So honestly, I think that might be the right call playing two slicer. We're going for a summon, going for a Sarah. That makes sense. Unaffected by trap effects. Interesting. All right. We're gonna have to let that chill. It is nice that this lets us target cards on the field. They are trying to summon... Hmm. I think we'll let that resolve. And now on resolution, we're gonna get to use our Kusari Gama, cutting off hand effects, which I genuinely just, wow, don't like because it means we can't hand trap them. This is. This is weird. We could say no, to be fair. We don't have to do it. This would stop Parallel Exceed, but obviously I've already used it. It's weird. The Rika stuff feels... It feels decent actually but it's the extra deck that's kind of strange they didn't give it a reason to link up a whole bunch their boss monster the link five here daiso daisoga something like that if a monster is specced from your opponent's deck and or extra you can destroy two monsters on the field that's it that's all he does with 33 attack i just don't really 
This doesn't seem like a fitting payoff to me. I don't see how that's the deck's end goal, you know? Also, why do I always struggle this hard versus trap tricks? What is wrong with me? Me too. Okay, that was weird. It's passing back to us. Let's use this now and get rid of that set card, or at least try to. Good. Holotea, okay. What did I activate? Oh, spec one trap tricks from your deck with a different name than cards you control. Reading. Reading. It's overpowered. A lot of bodies to achieve nothing. Yeah, that's what it looked like, and that's kind of what it feels like. This is my first ever duel with Raika. I shouldn't I shouldn't hate on them this much. We've just started. We'll keep playing it, but I'm it's not blowing my mind or anything. And a lot of times when something is really strong, it changes my mind immediately. That's how I felt when I discovered the Leos line. That's how I felt when I discovered the Slicer line. There are some things that just are as strong as they look. Very narrow for the extra indeed. I also thought of playing two cosmic slicers. Meanwhile, I try to loop with Nephilibus. Yeah, I think that's I think that's also an option, but I think playing two is just going to be safer, right? We have a couple options here. Let's our opponent has nothing except maybe a hand trap. They have no field interaction here. Like this is such a bad board they've made, and we're struggling this much to out it. That is not a good sign. There's the ash. I'm going to take a bite quick. This is so lame. What a terrible board. We'll remove the Sarah. Oh, we won't remove the Sarah. Huh. <laughs> Reading. I mean, we still have lethal over it, at least. You fool. Your Rafflesia only does you more harm. I mean, they probably didn't think we'd just put a bunch of dumb bodies on the board and go for damage, though. All right, finally, a slow and painful lethal versus our opponent here. Let's go for a win-loss, why not? It's kind of fun. I don't know that there are any changes. Uh, there are. I want to play two slicer. Right away, I want to play two slicer. Let's cut the Baguska. I don't really want that there. All right, let's play again. I did have fun. It was fun trying new cards, special summoning more stuff. I can also see an argument for running more of the Rika Link monsters. That makes sense to me as well. I'm not going to do it just yet, but I could see that being an option. I'm going to take another bite here, excuse me. Oh, thank you, Julio. I will fix that. Hang on. We'll do that right away. I'm sorry about that. I'm not... I'm not the most... well-versed in... that sort of thing, to be honest. I gave myself 100, I guess. There's the Discord link. Please join if you are interested. I, we would be happy to have you. 
The Discord's super nice. Lots of really helpful players. Lots of very talented players. And me. <laughs> so. Thanks for joining, Julio. Appreciate it. I think we go for a Zoha play here. It sucks opening the trap card again. It kind of makes making the Sun Avalon worse. I was looking for more snake players. There are only so many of us. I suppose we just go for the slicer line as best we can, and then we use the Rika monsters to pivot should we fail to reach the slicer. The more I play this one Nunu, the more I like it, to be honest. Forgot there was a stream, just got back from locals. Yo, tell me how it went. Give me the tournament report, please. Also, thanks for coming out, Dragon. You never have to, but I always love to see you. I appreciate having you come out. It's nice having talented players in the Discord. That way people don't just learn to be stupid from me. Somebody's got to bring value to the server, you know what I'm saying? I'm not doing that. 4-0, beat Sword Soul, pure Snake Eye, and two voiceless. You're a killer. Will this be on? Will you put it in the Discord? We can take a look at it if you don't mind. Was it with Ogdo? Are you a are you a maniac who's maining this garbage like me? Like I said, I'm sure you saw, I went 2-1 at Locals, lost to Voiceless. I always lose to Voiceless, although I lost to Contently Forlorn. Yeah, I can throw it there. That'd be awesome. Thank you. I lost to Contently Forlorn. I always do. He's just a really good player. He's very nice, though. He's super nice. We're going to make the Slicer. Actually, are we, though? Do we go for the Rika plays here? In fairness, I forgot the continuous spell target protection for like two or three times. Yeah, it's it's really that's it's honestly a really tough piece of interaction to deal with for my deck with the punk variant specifically. I'm a little torn on what to do here. I guess we just go for the slicer because as it stands, we're already playing into the nib. We are also running a lot of one of trap cards. I don't like that. I think one of them's probably got to go, and I don't think it's the planet pollutant. We can spec out the Kamikiri. We don't have a normal summon. Let's use this. Let's use Daybreak, put back the Naya, and then we'll send a Night Sword. This is why I hate you, Shock Trooper. I hate when you're always trying to activate on nothing. Ah, oh, throwing. Reading. Reading. I don't believe in it. It's not real. I'm not going to do it. Hmm. Throwing for real. The Rika Trap just doesn't seem worth searching. Am I crazy? It's free, but it's just another brick. When Rika... Spec it in defense. Hmm. So what I the misplay here, please forgive me. Second duel with these guys was this guy's summoning condition is placing a banished rip on the bottom of the deck. And I put it back with daybreak without thinking. So we're just gonna have to pass here and hope that the slicer lock is good enough. I set myself to a lava golem. That was smart of me. Dragon locals just saving that deck list. I want to take a look at it together. That looks really fun. Amano Iwato, not good enough, buddy. Monsters can activate their effects. No, you. No, you. That's my gig. Except mine takes a hundred summons and running bad cards. And yours is a normal summon. We are not the same. Now, this is pretty bad. Tip here. Searches out. 
basic I mean obviously any runic card. Destruction isn't the one I thought, so they must have flashing fire in hand already, which is depressing because I don't want them to have that in hand already. There's the destruction on the imperm. We let it I mean we could just activate the imperm for no reason, but this is a master duel. We don't have to do quests. We lose some Rika cards. Normal Amano activate right of Airman. <laughs> the flashbacks, the shell shock. We're drawing two cards here. We're in trouble. Flashing fire, popping our slicer. Unless they're feeling charitable, and then they pop the night sword. Hey everybody, thanks for coming out by the way. We're playing some Rika, having a good time. Well, not having that good a time. Serpentine Princess also f seems weird. I don't know. This is hard to banish for us. End phase. Wait. 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 They... They left Slicer on the board? Why? No, why for real though? We're going to return this to the bottom of our deck. Spec our Kamikiri. Why is Slicer alive? Why did you do this? I mean, I guess Slipnir deals with it, but... I, I don't know. That still seems weird. Slicer... <laughs> oh, wait a sec. Hmm... Do we just have to go battle phase to deal with their board? I think we're in a normal summon the Serpentine Princess. Because actually, monsters cannot activate their phase except spirit monsters. Wait! Oh, this is terrible for you! You just can't use your runic either. I'm gonna go battle phase and kill your dudes. Okay, slumber. You should have done that on an attack declaration. I don't know why you did it. This way, I guess you would just want to draw cards early. What's happening? I'm going to take another bite. Cool story, bro. Okay, so Amano Iwato is actually a little better than I thought. I didn't fully appreciate that monsters cannot activate their effects, period. I'm used to hours where monsters on the field with eight counters cannot activate their effects. Do you like how many more qualifiers we have to have for our card? Hmm, I guess I should have seen that coming, but they're not drawing off it this turn at least. <clears throat> we are going to die to the mill for real. Wife brought pizza. It's gaming time. Milling another three, right? Yeah, three. Ouch. Our slicer is getting us killed versus this Amano Iwato sticking around, honestly. 
Yo, we should play this. Hang on. Hang on. Let cook. What if we ran Amano Iwato so that we could do this? Is this is this a new synergy? Dragons, what do you think? I need the review. This seems busted. And then we just link it off or whatever. Right? Come on, this seems crazy. I think we lose this turn probably. Oh no, duh. Obviously we wouldn't be able to do this because Slicer only affects monsters your opponent controls, duh. Tip, gonna banish one and search any card they want. Yo! I don't know if you're in the stream right now, Dark Damon, but thanks for joining the server. Excited to see an unintended tech. Well, if you're stupid and can't read, <laughs> but don't do that. It doesn't work. Read your cards, kids. Uh, I don't know. I think we just lose this one to Runic Mill. We'll go battle phase. Hey, thanks for joining the server, Damon. I appreciate it. I hope you have fun. I'm certainly not. We're going to scoop this one up. Reed, but I thought this was Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, no kidding. All right. GG's to Sir Runic. Does anybody have any recommendations to this deck, by the way? Hey, old goon, I don't know if you're here in the stream right now, but if you are, thanks so much for joining the server. Also, feel free to subscribe, anybody who's not. I don't like asking because it makes me feel bad, but... That's a long time. Did you move or something? Or is your locals far away? I hear that a lot with European players. If you are interested, I just did a deck profile on my regionals deck list. It just went 2 1 tonight at locals, too. It's a punk octode deck. Check it out. It's pretty spicy. What's happening? Did I leave anime stuff on by accident? I had to move for part of job slash studies, but only for a time, and the town where I am now barely has any locals at all. The town where I was before I had up to three locals per week. That's awesome. That sounds like my local scene. We have events on 
and we have a lot of like side stuff too like edison and uh speed duel i think you did well this sucks i'm i just died to what just happened no get it. we're not counting that where's oh allowed cards oops that's the first time someone's brought anime garbage Honestly, let's take a look at the deck really quick, because I actually don't really like having this many bricks. Honestly, the Sun Avalon seems like a really solid line for this deck. I'm tempted to keep that in over the Link 3 trap card. Let's cut this. I don't like this card, and I don't like seeing it. Anime cards dying in the time takes to write and read among a message. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a few changes. I also know that this was probably made with Serpentine Princess in mind, but you kind of have to normal summon the card, don't you? Because the links revive themselves by putting, yeah, rip monsters you control. And I'm just not seeing a world where we get Serpentine Princess out all that often, to be honest. Honestly, I see us getting more value out of Alasia here. There's a way... There's better ways to access Rekka than Serpentine. Okay, cool. I like that. That seems gimmicky. We have two more slots. We definitely want more extenders, more starters. I like... Marikobe. Jasmine with two of the, ooh, Rika Link two being the plants for it. Hang on, Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, right? Got to be. Let's cut some rank fours. We don't need these. So if we go Jasmine, you contribute one monster scar points to spec one plant from your deck in defense position. That seems great. Two plant monsters. Hang on, how do we access? with two of the Rika Link 2 being the plants for it. Oh, this is a plant. Okay. Kawaddle summons if we have Dark Reptiles. We don't really have that many Dark Reptile options. Alasi is a better extender than Kawaddle in this case. Two copies of the Rika Link 2. Is that any good? That seems hard to set up. We could play more Tokage, but I don't actually... Yeah, Tokage is not terrible. We could also play Lone Fire. Could go Kawaddle and two Black Mamba. Also, hey, Contently, thanks for kicking my butt today. Black Mamba. I really don't play with this card much. It's got a weird level. If you control a Reptile, you can spec this. You can only do it once per turn. If this card is normal special, you can target one monster upon control. Send one Reptile from deck to the graveyard. If you change that, it's battle position. This card is cool. Oh, and for decklist, I kind of have a personal grudge against any Kashira cards. I refuse to play them all. That's fair. They're... Fenrir is also not a free card. It's not cheap. I paid 20 bucks for mine because I wanted to do well at regionals. I just like playing. I was happy to buy. I'm a pretty budget player. That's part of the channel is that I try to keep the costs pretty low. But Fenrir felt like something that would be really good in punk and really good in Nugdotic and just really good in general. So I wanted to play with it. So that definitely changes things, but honestly, today at Locals, I was thinking this, I was thinking about making a short on it or something. In the Punk build specifically, if you can find a level 7 extender, I think that's a good enough replacement for Punk monsters. Is it as good as them? No. But the best part about the level 7s in that current build is that they make a really early Barone and protect against the Nib. The Nib is what kills us here, and so getting that really early is really nice. Two copies of the Rika Link 2 Daybreak sets it up easily. Oh, Dragon, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that because I'm so used to going for the Slicer line with the Daybreak. I do like Black Mamba because I like that they made a card that takes advantage of how bad Curse is, since Curse is putting a monster on the opponent's field even when you're going first. It does get a mill though. That's really solid. That's really strong. Yeah, we can try Black Mamba. It's the most unconditional extender. 
Let's go for this. I like this look. We cut a brick. We added some consistency. We have more of a plan going into the play. We opened a really weird hand. Add one. Okay. Let's start with this. This is worse into Droll, but it's better into Ash if they... You can only use... You can activate one of these effects. Oh, it's sad. Okay. We're going to go for the search. What's the vendetta against Kashtira, by the way? What's the story there? I'm curious now. Send this to Grave. Do you just feel that they're too strong? Because I don't think I disagree with that. I really don't like the shifter aspect of Keshtira. We're going to add this to our hand and we're going to add. Hmm. I guess just this to our hand. We don't need two of them. And then we're going to banish one. Oh, that's so nice. Especially when I did it wrong. Man, I hate the matchup with Keshtira hands. What do you mean the matchup? I mean, that's that's what I like about them, though, is that they can kind of carry a, a duel all on their own. I didn't finish my story because I was I got distracted with my match, but my last duel versus my Snake Eye opponent, I won because I did Anti-Spell Fragrance, Solemn Strike, both set, and I just set up a Barone. I mean, playing against them. Yeah, listen, it's not a matchup I do super well into either. But. I don't know, I guess I just feel the deck isn't. Hmm. Valor there. Interesting. If we go. We can water. I face too many in Master Duel. <laughs> You're. I, I mean, I feel that a little bit. Mostly, yeah, no, I totally agree with that, Dragon. That's my exact thought. I don't mind Kashtira, especially with a Rise Heart, or Rise Heart, sorry, I get them mixed up. But I don't mind Cash until they're shiftering you, until they're activating Dimensional Fissure and passing. Because then it's just not a game for us specifically, at least. We just cannot deal with Shifter. It's just, that's also what I like about the Punk Engine. This is a really weird spot. Oh, we can make Jasmine. That's funny. But we already used our plant, so it doesn't actually do anything. We could go into the three. I guess we just try to set up the link five. He's not searching anything because I cut the thing. Maybe that was a mistake. Otherwise, it's fine. No, I agree. I actually, Kestira isn't an archetype that boils my blood. I am actually a big fan, especially now that I've been playing it more. I'm actually a big fan of cards like Unicorn and... Fenrir, I think they're really cool designs. I like to keep an artifact against Shifter. An artifact? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar. Which? Oh, this is a cool synergy, but what just happened? Place it on the bottom of the deck if you do special summon this card. Banish it when it leaves the field. Hmm. Not gonna lie. Didn't know this would work this way. Okay, that's good to know. If a card would be banished when it leaves the field, that happens even if it would go back to the deck. Also, these guys suck. This says, then if you do, I hate that kind of clause. It's so easy to disrupt. They just make some cards worse than others. You know how they'll make cards that target and cards that don't target? They also make cards like this, where it's, if you do, then you can do this. And then they'll make things like, I don't know. It's just frustrating how they choose It'd be fine if this were just how the game worked. You know, if this is how tar card text is written, but it's not. This is a choice they made to make this deck worse. Nice. More lights, so we're weak to... Bastille still. I appreciate that, Konami. Thank you. Me... Mental Tuner! Artifact Lancia, the one that prevents cards from being banished. How do you activate it? Artifact... Let's look it up. Lancia. To 
Then trip, you can set this card during your opponent's turn if this set card is destroyed. So how are you popping this? During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card from your hand or face a field. Oh, another player can banish cards to us this turn. So you're just keeping it in hand, yeah. That's cool. During yeah, during your actually, no. I agree. Thank you, Dragon, for pointing it out. But no, that this is actually useless. Because we don't care about Shifter on their turn. We care about Shifter on our turn. If Lancia could be used on your turn, I would say this is a really cool tech, and it probably would have been run you know sides mains but because it's not i totally see why it's not seeing play right now do we droll them no obviously not but it'd be funny nice snake rain top deck is good here we know they have a lubellion Let's try to use our Ryoran Kuruisaki. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear people miss with that part. That's okay. I also did until Dragon pointed it out. That's why he's here. Konami's kind of scared of Snake Rain. All the reptile support is very safe. I, oh, I hate having to say this all the time, but I think that's a bad excuse for bad reptile support because they could always just ban Snake Rain or just make things that don't synergize with the graveyard. Like if you had a psychic snake rain, punk wouldn't play it because it wouldn't do anything for them. Snake rain is not good on its own. It's good if you have things that like to be in the graveyard from the deck. Yeah. So if that is the case, I hope they stop thinking that way. Here I think we're gonna go, we're just gonna special at one of our Raika monsters. I do like this graveyard recursion we're getting. We're gonna summon out the Marikobe. He looks so cool, by the way. I see swords in the back. Oh, this thing's totally going from a battlefield, isn't it? So, we're gonna add some cards to our hand. We like having some banished stuff, but we don't have too much. We haven't normal summoned either. So let's search this and let's... And then banish one card from your hand. Let's pick up this and pick up this. On the topic of foreign card names, I played against a French player at a regional and just loved it every time he activated Mon Ami Pure. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Just let us taste the block dragon like format. No, I don't want more cards like block dragon, even if they're in my corner. I've never thought about that. Monami Pearly. That's my friend, right? That's gotta be. That's so funny. Let's go for the spec. Nice. Put this back in our deck. That's really cool. I like that synergy. Night Sword is just better. And I like me some Night Sword Serpent. I'm happy we're playing the double Musha here. That feels good. We're going to use the Kamikiri to summon. Isn't Snake Rain simply countered by Ash? I don't think it would ever... I totally agree with that. Yes, no, you're 100% right, Damon. Versus Ash, Snake Rain is a great way to go minus two. It's, it's really brutal. Just because you can Ash it doesn't make it fair. It's got a discard cost. I think there are the Snake Eye cards are a good example of cards with stronger effects and less limitations. I think Snake Rain is a fair card. I, I'm not saying you can just ignore it and design cards however you want, but I am saying that I think Block Dragon is crazy, but you can ash it and it hurts. Oh no, for Block Dragon? Block Dragon should not exist. No, Block Dragon shouldn't exist. I don't ever want a card as strong as Block Dragon for us. You know what other deck sounds awesome in French? Metal Che. Does it? Same with Branded Fusion. No, I agree, Dragon. Just because a card can be ashed doesn't make it balanced. I... I 100% agree with that statement. Uh, we can still go for a res here too. That's wild. This card can't be destroyed by battle and it's unaffected by monster effects and we can't go into goddess. How are we outing this thing?
How are we getting rid of that card, team? Because we're locked into rip monsters for using Musha. Yeah, the turn. I guess we just make bodies that are bigger than it. That seems weak, honestly. Here we can go Musha. Let's put... Daily reminder that Harpy's Feather Storm French name is Le Dragon de <laughs> Compagne de Dame Harpy or Harpy Ladies Pet Dragon. Wait, Harpy's Feather Storm's French name is that? Am I understanding you right? Ah, uh, we're losing our Musha. We are able to go into Kusari Gama, who will buff up to exactly 32 so that it dies. There are still way worse cards that make more on their own without costs and are not limited. Yeah, that'll always be the case, but... Or are you saying them Block Dragon? Yeah, for whatever reason, they called Featherstorm Harvey's Pet Dragon. That No way. That's so funny. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It doesn't make any sense. Harpy's Pet Dragon. I can't even... And that was like ages ago, right? Featherstorm's... Oh, no, no, no. The new one, right? The new Featherstorm trap? I don't know how to... Lol. I don't know how to out this monster. This sucks. Let's Snake Rain, I guess. Just overextend as much as possible. One, two... Three... Hmm. I suppose I should think a little harder about this. One, two, three, four. Oh. This is where the Raikou or Sun of Elan trap would help. Would it? The Raikou trap wouldn't. This card can't be destroyed by card effect, can it? Oh, it totally can. That is true, Dragon. You're not wrong. They do have monsters in the grave. We're losing to a guy playing Mental Tuner because we can't out a Chaos Angel with this deck. I mean, part of that's just deck building. That's just on me, but... What am I supposed to do? Take responsibility here? I mean, we're able to fight over this thing now, at least. Not that that's worth very much. I also hate that this is destroy two monsters in the field. It's not up to two, it's not cards, it's destroy two on the field. I'm gonna make some burger now. Good breakfast, good luck. Thanks so much for coming up, Damon. I hope you have a great day. I, oh man, it feels bad. It feels so bad. Why do they just make some archetypes worse? Why does this guy only have that effect? We get to Droll here. I don't know if that's crazy good, to be honest. Druid's Worm. Do we even Droll? I mean, I think I have to, just in case they have more. I need to read this card. You activate one of these effects. Banish up to one light and up to one dark from your hand and or graveyard. Increase or decrease this card's level by the exact number banished. Okay. Or target two of your banished, one light and one dark. Return them to the graveyard if you increase or decrease this level. You can only use this effect of mental tuner once per turn. That's funny. Oh, uh, sorry. Part of me thinks they made them do less because they're so recursive. Yeah, I, I mean, that's fair, Dragon. Going for a kind of grind playstyle. Where you kind of... It's tough. Incremental advantage is a tough thing because you still need to have an explosive start, I would say. Stuff like Lab, stuff like Runic, they come to mind as grind decks in my head. And they still are able to put out quite a lot at the beginning, at the outset, to set up that grind. But I don't think you're wrong because the Rika cards don't banish once they revive. They can keep doing that. It's just that you just have infinite material for... No payout. Also, this guy's gross. Is this guy... 
the plant level one who collected a bunch of stuff from the battlefield like is that a hoof in his left hand okay so let's appraise our deck maybe we cut i think we cut the sun avalon trap or the rika trap like so Oh man, it would be so nice to not be rip locked. Are there any extra deck monsters I should be playing that I'm not playing? Oh, I mean, that means we can cut the Sun Avalon too, doesn't it? Are there any Sun Avalons that are good for Rika? I don't want to read these things, man. Oh, I don't have to play a normal monster. Sun Avalon Link. No, it's still good for the mass pop effect. Oh, might be. Might be. Yeah, I forgot I had that. Yeah, no, totally. Bang. Is that a card or is that a French card? I honestly thought you were talking about a... Nope, this is a thing. During the main phase, quick effect. Oh, two plus plants, by the way. Target one effect monster your opponent controls. Take damage equal to its attack. And if you did take damage, return it to the hand. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish two or more link monsters from your graveyard whose combined link ratings equal exactly four. Spec this card to banish the ooze of the field. Yeah. Okay. French tree guy. Sounds okay. I don't foresee myself using this line, to be honest. So let's put in... What are you called? <laughs> Benga Lancer. Okay. He's cool. No, that's a good... Well, I must go. Oh, bye, Julio. If you are still here, have a great night. Echidna? Oh, I left Echidna out. Bro, Ogdotic player here. Thank you. Great stream day. A few months ago, I found your channel and has inspired me to try some things with the Ogdotic. That's awesome. Thanks so much for such a nice comment, Julio. We'll see ya. Track trip. Tri oh my god, I can't stop. Trap tricks a. Adipus. Two plus monsters, including an insect or plant. That's a good summoning condition. All trap tricks you control gain a thousand, so she buffs to 28. While you have a normal trap in your graveyard. Oh, while wow, you have a normal trap, which we do have a normal trap. Once per turn, target face up cards your opponent controls up to the number of insect and plant monsters you control. So if, instead of rip, negate their effects. Then you can apply banish one normal trap from your grave if you destroy one of those target face up cards. Okay. Yeah. That seems solid. Let's go. Hmm. What do we cut? Probably Goddess. Honestly, Masquerina should probably go too. Actually, we probably keep we probably keep that's cute. We probably keep goddess over you. Let's try one more duel. We've made some changes. We'll probably wrap the stream up pretty soon. I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming out. I really appreciate the support. Thoughts on Rika? They sure do make field presence, but man, they don't make it easy. It would have been nice if we had a few more cards in this wave. The plant is also solid. I like that the plant can search the insect and then they make a link to the link to summons a thing. The insect summons a thing. But what from there, you know? Oh, I never updated the list on screen either. That's funny. Let's close that. Wave two, link one reptile foolish, a rip on summon. Yeah, I think the ratios might be plant, two reptile, one insect. Oh, that's a good point. Content. I'm playing kind of weird ratios here. Like I said at the start, I am copying Lithium's build, but there were also 
also things in his build that I just straight up changed because I just didn't like them. And so I think that's a good tip, changing the ratios around. That's a great recommendation, actually. I think I don't want to see more Link 1s. While a Link 1 would be great for Ogdo, I just don't like the kind of gameplay they facilitate. But maybe, maybe it'd be all right for Reptile because we're so weak. Maybe we just need like a really solid thing. Yeah, I might, I might swap two Insect Rika for one Serpentine and one Quaddle. Might even consider Monster Reborn. I think Monster Reborn's awesome. In a deck with Nephilibus and Snake Rain, I honestly think there's a world where Monster Reborn is just a good card. It's one I think about a lot for my lists. I usually cut it for space, but it's really cool how hard it is to interact with. Obviously, Ghost Bell stops it, but a lot of the hand traps that are usually really solid kind of struggle to deal with cards like Monster Reborn. Now you're making me want to put it back in my main deck. Don't mind me, just not drawing any hand traps while the Blackwing player pops off. Staring at a bunch of nothing in my hand. Sorry, kind of zoned out there. Just hearing radio static while I watch them do this stuff. I have no idea what Blackwing does. I've played against it a lot. I was talking about this at Locals with Content, but there are so many decks that I should understand at this point. I've played against so many things, and I just have no clue what any of their cards do, because I just have never taken the time to really read them and absorb it. <laughs> Trashwing! <laughs> That's so mean. Whirlwind. What a creepy art for Black Feather. I'm also always turned on one on more hand traps or playing three triple tactics talent. I swear, whenever I open talent, my opponent is like cards on table. They're like, no, go on, play. I'm not gonna interrupt you. I went full board breaker to be fair. Yeah, I think that's also really cool, Dragon. I know that you do that and you see success with it. But... True, real tactics moment. <laughs> yeah, because just looking at your list, Dragon, you're playing two Cosmic in the main. I really like that. You're playing three Droplet, two Talent, three Thrust. You're actually not even run, and then three Fenrir. Fenrir obviously is good at breaking up boards. So you're not even running all that many board breaker cards, but things like Prosperity, things like Thrust, they get you there. I prefer the hand trap approach. I like trying to stop the opponent and the one called by. I, I don't know if I'd call called by a board breaker card. Or you're just like including it in like hand traps. Because, yeah, I do that, too. I kind of count it up there with them. It's weird how... I feel like Thrust should see more play than it does. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I count it as non-engine. Cool. That's what I thought. Sorry, I, was, I get distracted when I read and I talk at the same time. That's what I thought. That makes sense. I want to play more lists that play the Prosp, and it kind of is a board breaker against Fire Dex Promethean. Yeah, no, it's, I don't know, I, it just feels a bit disingenuous to call it a board breaker. It doesn't really break boards, it just stops Princess. It stops a lot of things, it stops Flamberge, it's great, but I wouldn't call those, those actions board breaking is all. But no, I totally see what you mean. The princess and grave is definitely part of the snake eye board. That is an important aspect of that line. I like this deck. Your deck looks really clean, by the way. Let me put it up while I wait for my opponent to finally do something interesting. We'll 
we'll throw up the deck list. I don't know if that's too small. We'll make it as big as we can. So here we got Dragon's local list. He's got the one of both deities, one of both royals, a curse, three Fenrir, the Leos line. So you've got the one Misk, the three Leos, the one Animadorn, the one Mega Corella, the one Singularity. You've got the IAS. I like that versus field spells. I think that's really cool. Bardish Pop Whirlwind genius plays here. <laughs> I'm not even paying any attention. Three Nunu. I still don't fully agree with that. I think you could cut those down, but I don't hate it either. Three Snake Rain. Two. Two. I don't know why you're playing two Water Lily and two Daybreak, to be honest. Why not just play one of each and like play two or one Nunu? Like you could have a smaller deck here. It kind of feels like you have a big main deck kind of for no reason. I also don't like the five Ogdotic spells. I think the Serpent Strike isn't good. Although Serpent Strike is much better when you run this many big monsters. So that's fair. I mean... We'll start with this. We'll send you... That's not... This is this is an inherent summon. What do they have? They have a Fog Blade. They have a Towers. Add some cards. We'll add this card and this card. Honestly, we'll just banish this. I suppose the deck list is a little big. Let me make it a teeny bit smaller so you can see like that. We'll special summon this. That was weird, but whatever. I don't really care. I just want them to use their interruptions. Special summon this guy. Can't, I don't know. Looking at boards like this is just hard on me. Wind Shadow. Becca Blackwing Synchro, I guess. Blackwing plus Raid Raptor, I will say, does feel very fitting. A bunch of dark winged beasts all jammed together, although I don't even know if Raid Raptors count as winged beasts. It's so funny, Yu-Gi-Oh types. Also, the reason is I like having more of the spells to open them more frequently and to have more copies in the grind. I play the deck like a control deck. Yeah, no, I, I guess I see that. That's definitely true. Yeah, I'm not saying it's dumb or anything. I just, I was confused on the reason, too. I still disagree with that. I don't, I don't know. They're so searchable, but I guess in a list like this, opening them is just not bad. Uh, I guess my guy is dead. That's pretty bad. I think we just lose this one. I'm just gonna scoop it up. Small sample size, but let's take a peek at the deck. Overall thoughts, I'm not super impressed with Rika. Lots of misplays for me. It takes me a while to learn decks, so lots of misplays for me. Definitely could have gotten more out of it if I played better, but honestly, I'm not super wowed. My first impression of the deck being a thing that can special summon stuff that makes stuff that is just underwhelming, it feels pretty spot on. I think I could be missing something, but I have a pretty strong feeling that I'm just not and that this deck's kind of lame. There could be some sauce in the extra deck. There are some things I could be running that I'm not maybe. Maybe the, I mean, the ratios are just not quite right. Let's amend that right here. We can have one more Takage. It leaves us with one more slot in the deck. We could play something else. Yeah, maybe we go... We already have so many extenders. I wish we had cards that did something other than just extend, honestly. It'd be really nice to be able to have something like Fenrir in here just for a really solid monster. You know, some uh, kind of an alternative plan, I guess is what I mean. But with cards like Musha being so important to the deck's plan, <clears throat> playing non-rip monsters seems counterproductive to me.
because he's definitely part of the intended game plan, it looks like. So, I don't know. What's a last card we could put in? We could even play three Mamba. Maybe just another new new for now, although I don't even want that, to be honest. So, for anybody who's interested, this is the deck list we're ending on for tonight. I don't know. What do you feel like, chat? I just feel like Rika is kind of lame, to be honest. I'm not super into the deck, and I feel bad saying that. We finally get some reptile support, quote unquote reptile support, and I complain about it. But I just don't really like what this stuff does. It's also just really basic. Special summon, special summon, search, special summon, or search, special summon, search, stop hand traps after one already happens. I don't know. It's weird. Rika is better plant deck than reptile. Yeah, yeah, totally. And we're here for the reptiles. We're here for the snakes. So I don't know. It feels it feels a little undercooked. It feels a little undertuned. It just plays really hard into hand traps with no real payoff is what I, the read I'm getting. I guess it's a pretty sad conclusion to come to, but it's just how I'm feeling about the deck. So sorry to have kind of a sad takeaway on it, but I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you have a nice day. If you're not in the Discord, please join, uh, subscribe. We stream every week, usually around the weekends mostly. We upload a video once a month. Otherwise, thanks for coming out, everybody. We'll try this deck again. This isn't the last time we're going to try it, but this is probably it for tonight. So as always, I'll see you next time.